All right, so uh, I think it's pretty clear. Let's see a little bit of um, questions. Uh, yes, of course, the sim calculates aero uh, during aero effect of body roll, so that's why we try also to make the car not roll too much with uh, bump stops and with uh, front anti roll bar. It's always very stiff. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, yes, the Audi has a tiny bit longer wheelbase, but we're talking about like something like uh, 10 millimeters, 20 millimeters, something like that. It's really, really tiny, tiny. It, it, I mean, in those cars, everything is important. You saw that. So, if, if it suits better your driving style, go for it. That's the, the whole beauty of uh, Assetto Corsa. On every competition, on every circuit, you have at least five cars, at least five cars that can win on every circuit. So those cars might change, some cars might be able to win everywhere, like, I don't know, the Mercedes, uh, the Audi maybe, uh, uh, some cars might be able to win on some circuits, like the Aston Martin, the old Aston Martin can win at Paul Ricard maybe, because it has tons of acceleration and top speed. Uh, but, you know, you have at least five cars that potentially they can win. So, exactly, uh, Voodoo Child, you, if you screw up, you get disqualified like the 4 It happens. Mm. Yes, that's what I told you, uh, James, Andrew. Uh, if you start with a little bit lower fuel and you fill it up during the first pit stop, then you can do the race with lower right heat for at least until the car has lots of you know fuel you can do it I mean the rules are clear it's not illegal it goes a little bit against the idea of the regulation but the rules are, really, are, are very clear about this we you know measure the car at the start of the race we measure the car at the end of the race what you do in between the race it's up to you what represent the uh, three lines as I said uh, it's the bump stop I've talked about it earlier, um, the, the green uh, line is the down bump stop, practically you don't care about it, it's fixed, it is as it is. Uh, the yellow line is the movement of the suspension, in fact if I change something, the car bounces and you can see the suspension going up and down, up and down, up and down until it stabilizes. Uh, before someone says something about it, um, it, it goes like that because in the setup we try to lower the dampers at a very low level so that the car can change ride height relatively fast because otherwise with the dampers so stiff as they are uh, it wouldn't change uh, the ride height properly and you could be very fast at changing things save and save something that it was asymmetrical because in the background it would try to make the car symmetrical but it didn't have the time so uh, in, in the user interface we lower the physics behind it, it still work but we lower the damping to low values, so that's why when I change something, you see this boing, 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 boing in the yellow line. And the red line is the bump stop. So you have a tiny bit gap of the suspension until uh, it goes to touch the bump stop. Uh, as I said before, uh, you want the front, especially the front, to practically touching the bump stops all the time. The bump stops are not a fixed value, but they are a hyper hyperbolic uh, curve. It goes like, like that, right? So you touch them, they are very soft. The more you compress them, the more stiff they get. Stiff, 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 until you know, they control uh, the, uh, the pitch. Um, The rear bump stop, you, usually you don't want the rear of the car touching the bump stops. Because of the stiffness, uh, uh, it can give you uh, traction issues, big traction issues, especially over the, the, the bumps. So usually all the, um, all, all the, uh, the teams do not really let the suspension to touch you know, uh, the rear bump stops. Some some um, teams on some cars and on some circuits 
do use rear bump stops. It takes a lot of fine tuning. Uh, for example, I know they told me that if you want to know about bump stops, go ask the uh, engineer of Rinaldi. They call him the god of bump stops. Uh, that's what they told him. So, you know, it, it depends on the engineer. But generally, you don't want bump stops at the rear because when you go over a bump, they compress a lot, they make the rear very stiff, and then you lose traction. No, no, uh, in uh, Niels, in ACC, they are rising rate, uh, uh, it's hyperbolic, uh, we can even change it from car to car with different, um, I would say, gammas for, for, the, uh, uh, for the curve. Uh, and what you see in the rate is the, is the is the force because obviously we cannot because it is you know hyperbolic and rises stiffness we cannot give you the exact rate because it changes as you go as you compress the bump stop uh, we give you the force at 10 millimeters so 1,000 new 1,100 uh, newtons here at 10 millimeters of bump compression this is the the reference point into this setup we're doing. Um, Yes, it's front and roll is the same. Obviously, the effects that you have at the rear, you have at the front. M6 likes some rear bump stop. That's true. That is why that car is problematic. Uh, it, the rear uh, suspension of the M6 moves a little bit too much. Uh, and uh, um, the uh, diffuser is quite big, which also means automatically it's also quite sensitive in pitch. And so you have a car that, when it moves and goes up and down, especially at the rear, it becomes unstable. And you can see that if you go and check 2018 uh, Brands Hatz race. Uh, Brands Hatz is a pretty bumpy car, a uh, bumpy circuit, sorry. And you could see how the cars were quite bumpy. Um, the BMW was forced to, to use some bump stops at the rear because otherwise it would go too low and it would stall the, the rear diffuser uh, and uh, the car was very undrivable it was lacking um, traction I think at some point even the commentators were talking about that that the drivers told them that the car was unstable uh, and was lacking traction it was a little bit of difficult and a handful to, to drive so go check GT World YouTube channel check the uh, Brands Hatz 2018 race You'll see the um, BMW having issues dealing with the bumps of, of the circuit. Uh, it's, um, it's a good car, it's not uh, a bad car, but it is difficult to find the operation we do. What operation we do means, we will talk about that in a minute. So, uh, yes, it might not be eight at Spa. Spa is a very smooth track. So if you manage to make the car work, it is fast, you know. Uh, obviously, it is a 24 hours, so everything can happen. But if you if your car is not good enough, even even with luck, you won't be up front. I don't know yet on the AMG 2020. I don't know yet. Uh, I don't know yet. The car was already very. Uh, uh, very competitive e even in 2019 uh, Marcello's car Raffaello had tons and tons of bad luck I mean those guys really had all the bad luck possible in 2019 last year otherwise I'm pretty sure that the car would be up there in the front uh, but you know obviously the uh, the other cars the new cars are getting faster so they want to, to be faster too. I know they get tons and tons of BOP, especially in weight, because they cannot really um, restrict the engine a lot. Because, I mean, they keep restricting the engine, but it's still 6.9 liters. What can you do? It's, you know, it's mind-blowing the amount of torque it can, it can deliver. So they keep adding weight, but, you know, 